So how are you delivering your final audio? Are you making sure to deliver it to a specified LUFS level or maybe a specified RMS level? Are you making sure to add a limiter so that you can meet those specified ranges? Maybe you're just running through Audition's matched loudness tool that will automatically do all of this for you? Or are you manually doing this and using loudness software to ensure your audio is meeting the target loudness that you're going for? Well, I've got some good news for you. You don't need to do any of that. As a matter of fact, as a voice actor, you're not supposed to be doing any of that to your audio before you deliver it. Let's get into it. As a voice actor, when it comes to delivering your final audio, what does your process look like? Well, there's definitely a lot of varying opinions out there, but as always, I'm not going to speak to my opinion or the other opinions out there. I'm just going to speak to the industry standard. So with that said, uh, let's look at this from a casting director's point of view. Casting directors receive hundreds of auditions a day that they have to sift through and listen to in hopes of finding the right person to fit the spot that they're casting for. Well, imagine you are the casting director and you're having to go through hundreds of auditions a day. What if those auditions were all coming in at different levels? One was really, really loud. One was super, super quiet. And one was about right in the middle. You get the idea. They're all over the place. Well, you'd have to be constantly turning up and down the volume of your headphones or your speakers while you're listening through these auditions and you'd be doing this all day. Now, I know some of you might be thinking to yourself, tough crap, who cares? You have to, oh, oh, poor you, you have to turn up and down the volume all day. But but until you go through hundreds of auditions a day like they are, just you might want to hold off on judgment. But now what if all of those auditions were coming in at virtually the same levels across the board and all you had to do is click them and give them a listen? Well, that would be pretty convenient, right? Good news, this is one of the reasons that the industry standard is to normalize your audio to negative 3 dB. Doing this ensures everyone's audio will be consistently at the same levels across the board. And that means you just made the casting director's job a lot easier. And when you make the casting director's job easier, that will only help your chances and your career. If you make the casting director's job more difficult, you're setting yourself up for a higher chance of failure. You'd be purposefully sabotaging yourself. Okay, so why not negative 1 dB or negative 0.1 dB or whatever dB you want to say? Well, the short answer is the industry just agreed on negative 3 dB across the board, and that's that's it. Going a little deeper, negative 3 dB gives you a decent amount of headroom before your audio will clip, and that can be helpful for a number of reasons. Now, if you're on a pay-to-play site like Voice123 or something like that, they may actually have a different dB that they want your audio to meet, or they may just recommend a different dB. In that case, just make sure your audio meets whatever standard they have laid out on their platform. But okay, where in the chain do you normalize your audio to negative 3 dB? Well, you actually do this at the very end of your process. So once you've applied any processing that you may have added to your audio, that's when you would normalize your audio to negative 3 dB. And then you just export it and send it off to the agent or casting director and that's it. Now, should you be processing your audio as a voice actor with things like EQ, compression, and things like that? Well, you can find that answer in the video on the screen wherever I decided to put it in post. And when it comes to normalizing your audio, well, you know what they say.